All right, welcome back. Um, we are going to be switching the conversation now, talking about something that's gripped the nation's attention uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, bullying uh, in our schools, even online, you know. And um, we did hear about the case of Sylvester at Darwin College, uh, which got even the attention of Mr. President. So that's how serious it is. And I'm joined here now by an actor uh, of great repute, Adame. Thanks a lot for being here today. And an advocate, of course, because we saw you very active uh, during this was again, of course, greatness. Hello, Rochelle. Thanks for being here today. My Thank pleasure. you. But let me start with you first. I know we, we do, you do an actor, which is all you would know you for, and you're mm -hmm. doing amazing in that field. But we want to talk about, you know, what made you speak up the way you did, you know, about this, and why is this so important to you? For me, I I believe aside acting, everything that you do that has possibly changed your life for good, that has given you a voice, you should be able to affect. Um, the common man, I mean the common people, you should be able to affect the society positively. And um, from a point, I, I have a daughter that passed on last year, and um, she was not, uh, she, she didn't die just like that. She died on the day of the um, Lekki to Gate saga, but not on that she was sick and, you know, she died. From a mother's point of view, I'm a woman. I cannot even imagine that a 12 year old. I went to um, two boarding schools. I was 11 when I went to, um, I finished my primary school. I was born and brought up here in Lagos, finished my primary school here. Because my, pa my father, my father is from Bingui, my mom from Akwaibom. So he wanted me, at being the first daughter, to, you know, learn our culture and all that. So he took me home. So I went to like two secondary schools and we're all boarding schools in, in Bingui. And it wasn't as if they were not bullying us at that time. I was barely 11 when I got into secondary school. But it's not this way. Yeah. I mean, we all have stories. Yes. I remember in secondary school, my school mother, her practically say was acting like my real mom. But some of those things that my mom, she would pack her stuffs, you know, and wash and ask us to, <laughs> you know. And they used to punish me because I was stubborn, no lies. And you have other senior students and all that. And then I may go and do this. I'll say, no, I didn't come here for that purpose. They'll say, you know, you have to kneel down, do and go this and go that. I'll do. If I can't, I'll run to the principal's house and report. <laughs> so it was funny, not to this extent. Yeah. A 12 year old child dies, even if you're an animal. Compassion, for God's sake. You know, and when I heard what I heard from, I don't want to make her important, but I was, I was angry. She's done some things. She said some things. The lucky toll issue, you said there was no, nobody died there. They should come up. What kind of investigative journalist are you? We're talking about a child. The pain, it's not barely, it's not even up to a month. The family are still crying, mourning. I know I'm sitting here today, it's the grace of God. Because my daughter, was, my daughter was going to be 32 in December. She died in October. You wouldn't want to know, seeing me like this, you think all is well. It's just the grace of God. It got to a point I had to start seeing a psychiatric doctor. My younger ones would fly me to Calabar. Because it was like my world crumbled. Everything in my life stood still. I wasn't thinking of anything. I could boost myself off. You know, just... I don't know if you understand. I'm just putting myself in that woman's shoes. A 12-year-old boy, the last baby of the house, left the house to go to school, mm -hmm. and this child had complained. Do you know what the mother would be living with? When the child complained the first time, oh, maybe we would have withdrawn him from the school. Exactly. Changing the old stem, I mean, from one old stem to another was not... You know, you don't know. She must have beaten herself. She must have killed herself and died a thousand times. And somebody comes out to say... Um, I spoke with, um, I have an informer, uh, they gave me an information, um, the child wanted to be initiated. What does a 12-year-old child know? I'm a teenage mother, a proud one at that. Because of the foundation, if you, I don't know, sometimes we make silly mistakes. I was influenced by my parents, but I leave all that. There was something that was taught in my father's house. I did not forget that. So I don't blame anybody. I took the responsibility for it. I took the bullets. Listen, we're talking about a child that grew up with both 
parents, they are still together. They have a, we've seen videos, we've seen, um, you know, like on his birthday, I think I saw one when he was playing with the sister and the brother, what's the letter he wrote on his birthday, I was, I was mad. I cried for days. Then I just to wake up one morning and you heard somebody doing a Zoom meeting with some people and saying all sort of things about a 12-year-old child. That was sickening. If everybody would keep quiet because they feel that, okay, can come if she, if she doesn't. Nobody, you don't have anything on me. If I, as I am now, there is nothing that I've experienced in my life that I cannot talk about. Because today is a testimony. Today is a story. It's a different story. Look at me. Where am I today? 25 years after I was shot Domitila, to the glory of God, I'm still relevant. So if you honestly ask me, what should I give back? There are a lot, a thousand and one people on the street of Nigeria that have, you know, they've lost it totally. Yeah. And what do you do? We can, you cannot give everybody money. We cannot leave the, the government to do everything. We just encourage them. You just say something funny that puts a smile on somebody's face. So you they just can keep going. You understand? So that they, keep, they, they can keep going. Somebody saw me that way and picked me. That is why I'm here today. If Zebejiro did not notice that thing inside of me, I don't know where I would have been now. Somebody just believed in me and gave me an opportunity. And to the glory of God, we're here. You don't, you, anything that is worth doing is worth doing well. Because you have an opportunity to, to I mean, you, you know that your voice can be heard. People can listen to you. You have followers. I don't believe in that. that does not, that's not the way to heaven. If you have a billion followers and deep inside you, you are nothing. A lot of these people, let's not deceive ourselves. We're all in this business together. Some of these people, they wail every middle of the night. They are not normal. I can casually yeah. walk on the street of Lagos and I am a dame. You understand? I don't need to go and hire one, but I don't know. There is no need for anything fake. Be yeah. yourself. Speak the truth. My father said, speak the truth and it shall set you free. So that is it. All right, we're, we're going to take a break now. And uh, when we come back, we'll just find out. I mean, because we've talked about you know boarding school back in the days. A lot of 80s and 90s uh, secondary school kids have had the same stories. But I just want to find out how did we go from that, you know, to where we are? Was it a sad progression? Maybe we, should we have fixed things before it got crazy? As much as we say things are not like this, then was this what built up to where we are now? So we're going to take a break now and come back and continue our conversation. Please don't go away. All right, welcome back. Uh, you're just joining us before the break. We're talking about bullying culture, both online and offline. Of course, spurred by uh, the tragic death of a 12-year-old boy, Sylvester Romani, at uh, Darwin College. Uh, Adam was, is here with us. We've been talking about it. But we're also joined here by Greatness Alarm Family, who's an emotional recovery coach. Did I get that right? Yes, right. So well, before the break, I was talking about, you know, how we got here. You yeah. know, was it a progression yes. of what we've seen, a sort of a culture in schools, especially boarding schools in mm -hmm. Nigeria, where it was okay to punish? Yes. Uh, is that how we got here? Okay, yes. Yeah. So every one you give you can't give what you don't have, basic basically. So we inherited bullying and Definitely all we had to dish out was bullying because I also went to a boarding house and I remember they would break my locker, pack, pack my provisions and... And you just look forward to doing it to the next person? Well, or the junior students? Most people exact, did that. So they you know. did it to the junior students. So in my own case, I had gotten this deposit of love like uh, Madame Ada. In my JSS one, I had the old girl, senior preferred female, was my school mother, and she poured so much love mm. into me that I just couldn't find myself becoming a bully, yeah. because who raised the bully? The bully was actually bullied, yes, and yes. so most of the time, you have to make a decision to say, do I want to be a bully and repeat this cycle? Because it's a cycle. I've published two books on how I was bullied by my parents, how I was bullied in the church, I was bullied in relationship and canceled the wedding seven days to the event. Mm. And so I can really tell you, aside from me working with clients in about 30 states and four continents, I experienced bullying myself. I was coincidentally, I'm coming for a speaking engagement and I use Sylvester's story as a case study on talking about the bullied and the bully. Let's talk about how did they become who they are? Because there are eight participants in a bullying experience. And mm. I just spread out all of that to just say, so basically it's a learned culture that we have to reorient the upcoming generation. And I was sharing with the teenagers that I left a lot of things for me to be here 
um, to spend this time and teach you because I want you to raise a new generation that none of you here would be bullies. And if you are being bullied, you can now ask for help so we don't lose you like yeah. we lost Sylvester. So I, I hear you there, but who should we be speaking to? Because I saw a lot of opinions <laughs> online when this thing happened, yes. you know, some of which, of course, Ada has shared. Yes. Um, there were a lot of people saying, oh, the parents, yes. you know, should have done something. Yeah. Nobody's supposed to be blaming the parents at a time like this. But okay. as a parent, what should you be looking out for? Okay. Whether if your child is a bully or if your child has been bullied, mm. what are some signs you should be looking out Fantastic. for that should be like a red flag? So. The first person to blame is actually, and this is not to point fingers, but is a parent. The family, I'm sorry, the society is a picture of the family because the family is the basic unit of the society. And so we see that this, the society as dysfunctional because each, most family in Nigeria is dysfunctional. So the first place to start is actually the parent because um, when you want to intervene, make a, create an intervention for a bully experience is actually speaking up to a higher authority, authority than the bully. And so who should you be speaking to the teachers or the educators as well as the parents? Yeah. And now these people have to create an environment for the bullied to be able, able to open, open up, up to you. Yes. Because if you don't create that environment, I can't open up. up to you. Because I have to be sure that Ebuka has my best interest at heart. And when I open up to my dad, I know he's going to fight for me, he's going to believe me, he's not going to believe that I want to be initiated, he's not going to believe that um, the school is saying that it was, we, we, it was, it was consensual. Yeah. My, my dad will believe me and I'm going to open up to my so, dad. So from, from what we got from the Sylvester, let me come to you now, from the okay. Sylvester case, we, like you said, the parents had an idea. You know, and you were saying maybe the mother is beating herself up. So does it not fall on the school? Was it, from what she's saying, does it mean the school was not a safe enough space the, to speak up? Because I know you are a parent, so yeah. you know how you this see, works. like I always, uh, for issues like this, I want to use myself, like I said earlier, yeah. as a case study. Whether we like it or yes, 85% of the work that needed to be done, that has to be done, has to do with the parents. Yes, you create an atmosphere where you can relate with them. But when they leave you, they associate themselves with some people and they can be influenced yes. because of their mind and their age. The school didn't do well too. Yeah. If you're paying Two, a million, two, three, for a school that does not have, um, what's, the, what's the name of the camera? CCTV. CCTV cam in the school. Like one of the things that we had, we had about a particular student that they know that is notorious. Yeah. And it was part of them. What was the school doing about it? It is not about influence. It is not about the person's father or the person's mother is. Yeah. We're talking about your reputation. And safety of children. And the safety of the lives of the people that were committed into your hands. One should not be preferred. Yeah. One should not be treated differently. Mm -hmm. That's what brought us to where we are today. Yeah. It's one of the problems that we have in Nigeria today. One is preferred. One is giving more attention, which is, if you travel all the way, are you trying to say there are no schools in Worry? There are no schools in the whole of Delta State. There are no schools in the South-South. For them to trust this school, yeah. this school should, should. Because like I said earlier, when I was younger, when I was in, in my class one then, because I met, our set was the last set in 1985. <laughs> I did class one. I used to run just with pants. I was just barely 11, nothing. I run to my principal. The man would see me, I'd be like, oh my God. If you see, I became his spy. If you see what they are doing, he will call them out. Yeah. He will call the students out. Yeah. We had a matron that we could run to, that we could talk to. She speaks, she's not literate, but she speaks to us like she will talk to you in a language that you will understand. Some people got pregnant along the line, like I got pregnant too. But before I got pregnant, somebody was pregnant. We wooed this person and she later called the person and spoke to her. I said, no, I have known. 
You're not aborting this pregnancy, but this is not the end. You're going to go back to school. We need parents, teachers. If you, I, I know some parents actually, they leave their responsibilities for their nannies, their, and some parents don't like their children to be talked to. Don't talk to my child like that. You know, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. I'm not saying that everything has, sometimes you correct the old pattern. Yeah. Yeah. We are not seeing the Westerners that we are emulating, whether we, are, we like it or yes, we've traveled out of this country. You can't tell me that they are not crying. The morality that they threw into the gallows is what is killing them today. And it's visiting us gradually because we know how to adopt. Yeah. I want, I want to talk about, you know, the way out of this. Because bullying is not a Nigerian, it's not exclusively a Nigerian sure. problem. Yes. I mean, we see stories every day in the United States, even, which is supposed to be the beacon of, you know, of, of advancement and all of that. And we call it a culture. And once something becomes a culture, it means it's a part of how we live. Yeah. Is there a way out of this, you think, as quickly as we can? Yes, yeah, so the school, when school creates, so of course, first of all, it's from the parent. Um, parents have to get knowledge. Um, Be more involved. Yes, they, they have to get life. knowledge in, get knowledge and be involved in your children's life in such a way that your child does not need to tell you some things for you to see Seeds. that they are, there's something wrong. Because they are actually effects, they are effect of bullying the life of your child. The first is low self-esteem. A child that, is, that talks assertively before suddenly is becoming aggressive or... Oh, subdued. Exactly. Something is wrong. The, the, the next is the performance of the child in school, right? Um, how is this child interacting? Do you communicate? And... Communication is not the quantity of time, it's the quality, quality of time. So you're not telling me you're communicating with me, and you're pressing, you're responding phone. to emails. Mm. Oh, the, yes, it's, it's a reality, but you have to, and which is why I love, like, there's this man I call my father, he tells me greatness, let's, he's a VC of a university, and he will tell me greatness, come, let's, I'll create time to speak with you. Because he knows that there is no time. No, but everybody is busy. Everybody but you have busy. to create the time for your child. Now, for schools, when you have policies, according to Darwin, they kept on saying, oh, they have anti-bullying policy and all of that. Is it being implemented and regulated? Because I'm also an HR practitioner. We understand we can set policies, but we can just set it for the records yeah. so that when the, the government comes, they know we have this policy. But is it being implemented and regulated? That's another thing on its own, because when these policies are created, and everyone is aware, both the teachers and the students, and create now the safe space because you're, you as a child in a school, you have to feel safe. You have to feel secure, which is why the idea of the government shutting down the school was just the best. Yes. Because no child in that school will feel safe and secure again, at least till all this issue is resolved. And so creating an environment that makes your school safe and secure is so important. And to the bullied, you need to learn to speak up. Yeah. You need to speak up to someone that believes you. If your parent don't, I'm so sorry about that, but you definitely will have someone else that, be, that will believe you. And um, why, is that, why is it that the, the seniors enter the, the dormitory and there was no house master or you know, guardian, so, so, just so creating the structure that ensure that everyone is safe. Like I'm going into my hostel. I'm not afraid that anyone can walk in. That's why people pay huge mo amount of right. money to stay in secure environment. This conversation is very heavy. I mean, I wish we would continue because even online bullying is a whole other conversation. Oh. You are a celebrity. I'm sure you see comments uh. that you want to respond to sometimes. <laughs> I just want to, I know you have thick skin, but at the same time, certain things will always get to us. Definitely. But unfortunately, we're out of time. Okay. Um, thank you so much for coming. Any quick, quick words on what you're working on very quickly before we go? What am I working on? <laughs> <laughs> you're always working on something. What's your Instagram page? Let's follow you there. And, and Ada get, Ame. At Ada Ame. That's all. A-M-E-H. Yes, Ad please follow her on social media. <laughs> As greatness, A T H O, one word, greatness. Thank, thank so it's you like very greatness at all. I'm, I'm a huge, you know, you know, I'm a huge uh, fan. You know I love <laughs> Your market is selling well. With that, right? <laughs> Thanks a lot for being here today. Thank you so for much for having me. I, I can always say you can follow the conversation on social media. Please use the hashtag Robbie Minds when you send us a message. Have a great week and Merry Christmas. I'll see you next time. Come on, come on.